Thank you very much. Um, so I am by myself. I don't have any moderator or anything like that. So I figure that I will just sort of introduce myself. I'll tell you guys what I, what I do in terms of books to film to game, my general thoughts, and then I can open it up for uh, questions and conversation. Um, I'm not sure if I should do it here or here, but um, I'll start here and then I'll take questions here. Um, so I um, am a vice president of production at Walt Disney Studios in the live action group. That is to say not the animated movies, but the live action movies. And in that capacity, I am in charge of finding and developing ideas that can be movies um, live action movies. Um, the movies that my division of Walt Disney Studios makes are movies like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, uh, we have a movie coming up called Tron. We released earlier this year a movie called Alice in Wonderland. Um, and various other movies like that. Um, I would say that in large part Books, film, and games are all sort of doing similar things. They're telling stories. And so for the most part, um, especially as we head into the 21st century, um, the lines between those three types of storytelling are becoming more blurred than they've ever been or more combined than they've ever been. Um, we, um, in development, of, the, of films, we look very, very um, diligently at, uh, at literature, at books. Um, we also look at games to find stories that we can then tell um, in live action movies. Um, traditionally though, we've probably relied more on books to tell the stories than we have any other form of tele storytelling. Alice in Wonderland is obviously booked uh, based on a piece of literature by Lewis Carroll. Um, you know, the, the examples go on at our studio as well as other studios. Harry Potter as another example, Twilight as another example. Um, and, and what we're finding is that essentially we want to find stories that we feel can translate into various different mediums um, for, the, uh, for the experience of the viewer or um, the person taking in the story. So if you liked Pirates of the Caribbean, we also want you to be able to play a game. We also like you to buy a book um, that talks about it. Um, in the case of the movie, a movie that we have coming up called Tron, um, which is based on a 19, 82 um, computer graphics game. It's actually the first computer graphics game that, that or sorry, a movie that was made and it inspired what is now Pixar um, because John Lasseter, the founder of Pixar, actually saw that movie and, um, and was inspired to make um, computer generated movies. Um, that, that movie coming out, of course, is a movie but we also um, have a video game associated with it. There's a comic book that is set to hit the, the shelves soon um, that has been created off of the mythology created in the, in the, in the live action film. Um, and you also find a television show along with it as well as things online um, that you can access. So for us, it's about telling stories in a variety of mediums um, not just the live action film itself. Um, similarly, we are looking at games, video games, um, you know, the typical for your console, Xbox, PlayStation, um, Nintendo, Wii, those kind of games, as well as um, online social games. We look at all of those type of things to say, are there any good stories here that can expand beyond this medium of playing a game into something that could be a live action movie and possibly even something that you could contain 
in a book or you know, graphic novel or some other kind of medium of storytelling. Um, so in essence, um, we're looking at things that can do all of those things. Um, I don't know. I think I'll, I'll just open it up for some questions if there are any and maybe we can, um, we can riff a little bit. Um, great. Sure. Hello there. Hello. Um, do you think there's a difference between a good story depending on the uh, media that you're using? Um, absolutely. I think that there are, for instance, great short stories, you know, um, that don't necessarily translate into great feature films or great video games. Um, in fact, one of the challenges um, for us as a movie studio in terms of creating stories that work in all different platforms is that traditionally video games based on um, film properties are not very successful. And I think that that's a direct cause of the fact that people want different experiences um, depending on what kind of storytelling that they're engaged in. So sometimes when you're playing a video game, you'd like to create the rules. Other times when you're watching a film, you'd like the film to take you to various places. So depending on exactly what the story is, we, we really challenge ourselves to say, what's the, what's the ability of this story to capture an audience in any specific medium. Sometimes things are great books um, that sell a lot of copies, um, but you, you make a feature film out of it and you know people don't necessarily want to see that in the theater. They'd rather read about it at home or in the privacy you know, of, of their own reading area. So definitely. Hello, I would like to know uh, how much does uh, the storytelling uh, play into the development of video games? Uh, because uh, I think there are game concepts uh, that are not so much uh, story driven, but uh, more about gameplay, about variation, about rules, interaction. So uh, is uh, the storytelling the starting point for the development of a video game or uh, I see. more the gameplay? I see. Um, it's a good question. I think that I'm not a video game expert, so I'll say that. Um, but I have thought about video games or looked at video games to translate into film. And what we found is that you have to decipher which is the strength of the video game. So sometimes it is gameplay, and there are a lot of gameplay type of games that don't have any real s story beyond that specific gameplay. There are some that um, we've actually looked at internally that Disney has created, and um, the video game group tells us, you know, we have to break into the marketplace, let's call it in a racing game, um, a car racing game, based strictly on the gameplay, um, where this audience doesn't care as much about what story is behind it, they just want to be able to drive the car and have um, a good experience that way. In that case, we decide, or in one specific case, we decided, okay, well, we won't try to go further and see if there's any movie to be had there because it's really not about the story, it's about the gameplay. In other, in other cases, though, story is leading the charge. In fact, we find that some of the more popular games, whether it be um, you know, Sims or, or other things, are based on people's ability to create a story and not just the gameplay. In those, in those cases, we look very carefully to see is that story something that we think can translate um, to, a, to a large screen and will people pay to come and watch it um, in a different version or would they rather just play it at their home? There's a question here in the back. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to ask something about 
preparing people for this new world. We've been hearing for the last day and a half, we've been hearing uh, pretty well the same story about transmedia, about the fact that the borders between the various media, between books and film, film and game, game and book, etc., mm -hmm. that they're all becoming rather indistinct mm -hmm. and they're melting into one another. How are we going to prepare future generations? How are we going to train the upcoming generations of media specialists or media mm -hmm. uh, contributors, people who are creating content? Mm -hmm. um, because obviously the classic training methods of let's uh, prepare graphic artists to do this and writers to do that, and filmmakers to do this. How do you think that's going, what we're talking about now is going to feed into our education system? What do you think is going to be needed? It's a very good question. Um, I don't know that I have the answer. I have a theory, um, or I have theories. Um, I think that, you know, in large part, the generations coming up will sort of dictate to us how um, they best learn or how they, how they want to learn. Um, so I think that what we'll end up seeing is less of, um, you know, not, not less of specialization per se, but less where you're one thing only and not another thing. So to the degree that people have, you know, a desire to tell various stories, they're going to have to learn how to do it in, in different mediums. Um, that being said, and maybe this is just a romantic notion of it, I still think that um, when you boil it down to its bare essence, it's still the same thing that you're doing, which is figuring out how to engage an audience out there. You know, what the story is, who's interested, that still has to take um, um, the lead in any kind of storytelling, regardless of what the technology is. Um, and therefore, I think what you'll probably end up seeing are people who like to tell stories in various mediums teaming up with people who have or a special ability in those mediums to tell it. So I'm not a graphic designer per se, but you know, I have a really good story that I think you know, can, can live online in, in, short, in a short form. I go out there and I find someone. You know, um, there is a, a number of screenwriters uh, that I know that are creating what they're calling, I mean, they're, we all call, but they're starting to call as well, intellectual property, which are their scripts or their stories. Um, but they're not simply handing over the script and saying, hey, can, can you read this and tell me what to do with it? They create the story, whether it be an outline or an entire screenplay, and then they go and they engage, literally hire um, concept designers or graphic artists to sort of help them build the vision. Um, and so what, what I'm seeing more and more is a teaming up of artists um, who have expertise in different mediums um, coming together to create a story for a specific medium. Any other questions? Uh, I was wondering that um, Disney is absent as an exhibitor here at the fair, despite it's obviously involved and greatly involved in uh, the use of rights and licenses. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning, as I went over the aisle, I met uh, two guys I know from London. They are from, from a private equity firm, and actually they're here for buying content. Uh -huh. And uh, I was it was the first time I ever saw these people over here for buying abstractly content. Yeah. Obviously, they were t having some appointments with major major exhibitors here, major publishers. So I was wondering, as rights buying is such a great, important issue for Walt Disney, do you have something like a strategic capital allocations for buying across use rights, film, book? I mean, somewhere, if, if this is the fair of where obviously ready-made content is available. Right. So w what, what is your strategy? For example, when you come to 